What's going on, everybody? Valor Brown here. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome to part two of the uh, train system tutorial. All right. Uh, let's see here. I am shooting this video on ooh, a separate day from, from the video, uh, from the first video. So these were not recorded back to back, so I cannot remember exactly where I left off. <laughs> So anyhow, with the first video, I hope everybody was able to follow along. It wasn't too confusing, right? So I hope you got things figured out, made sense to you guys. Uh, if not, like I said, just throw some questions down in the comments and, you know, I'll try to get to everything I can. And as always, if need be, I can always, uh, you know, I can record a second video, third video, fourth video, whatever it takes to get you guys up to speed and, and Get you the information that you need to know. Alrighty, so where in the heck did I leave off? I cannot remember. Alrighty, so I vaguely do remember going through my scene graph, right? I went through my placeholders here and I started exporting items as far as my selling stations, train system, uh, stuff like that. So I think if I was exporting, I was probably ready for a test because that's one thing I have not done yet. Uh, hopefully you guys have, hopefully you, you hopped in game and check things out. See if everything was working. Okay. Right. See if your gates were, were blinking and, and making noise and see if your, your, uh, train was choo chewing, <laughs> choo chewing across the map. All right. So hopefully all that worked out. So I'll tell you what, let's uh, take a quick minute right now for me to do that since I haven't done it yet. Uh, we'll make sure everything is working out okay, and if it is, we will start uh, moving some things around, right? We'll get the gate set up over top of the roads and whatnot. So, <clears throat> you want to give me two minutes, I'll hop in game and let's see what we get. Alrighty, so here I am, I'm finally made it into the game here. Took an extra minute to start up today for some reason. Uh, what I want to do is I want to tab into a vehicle, and I'm going to make my way over to the... Uh, to the railroad tracks. I probably could have flew over there or ran really fast, I guess, but eh, we'll drive today. Uh, what I want to do is I want to find one of these areas, as long as everything loaded up correctly. Yeah, there we go. I want to look for one of those uh, those hot spots there, the spline, or the uh, spline. Yep, that's it, of a spline bower. That's exactly what that is. Uh, one of the, the call box should be right at that area. And I want to call the train. Okay, and what I'm going to try and do is, as long as everything's okay, the train shows up okay, I want to uh, load it up with goodies and stuff like that, and, uh, oh, we're going to test three different things here. Once I get maybe filled up with some wheat, some lumber, wood chip, something like that, I want to, uh, first, of, first of all, make sure it kicks me out at the edge of the map, you know, when we get over there. And then I also want to make sure it sells whatever goods I have on there as far as wheat, lumber, stuff like that. All right, here comes the train. Now, what I don't like is it didn't doesn't really give me a confirmation here when you when you call the train. It doesn't give me a confirmation saying train has been called on its way. But whatever. Looking good. Oh, look at that bad boy, huh? Just a thing of beauty. All right, one thing you guys could look out for when you're testing this, right, is to look at where your wheels meet your track. And if it looks like your train is floating up above or down below uh, where that track is, uh, you can adjust your Y offset, the spline Y offset, and that will actually, uh, you can kind of fine tune that to get that down onto your tracks. So let's get, oops, actually, let me get out of there quickly. I wanna pick a car here. I believe the first car I can probably put wheat in that, could I not? Let's see. Um, yes, I can. Let's fill that with wheat, 90,000 liters. And I want to get back out and find another car where I can put some lumber. Would that be the last car or the fourth car? Uh, I believe the fourth car. Let's try that. Uh, nope, it's not going to let me fill that. I might have to do that by hand. Bummer, hey? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all I want to do is get some lumber on here. Okay, let me hop out quick. See if we can do it this way. More than one way to skin a cat. Yeah, of course I can't jump up there. That would have been too easy. Dang it. All 
greedy. We're going to have to try this a different way. Sorry, just bear with me for one second. Guess I didn't plan this out as well as I could have, but eh, that's okay. All right, now that I'm in here, let's do this. All right, this is the fun part here. Uh, let's see. We uh, nope, nope, nope. Don't want that. <laughs> I know, I get a little too excited about some things, huh? Well, it gets a little more than I should, but eh, whatever, that's okay. Alrighty, hop back into the train. Like I said, I'm looking for three things here. Number one, that it's going to kick me out when I get to the end of the map, and it's not letting me in because I'm in flight mode. Ugh. Boy, I didn't realize this was going to be such a task. Alright, now let me in there. Okay, so here we go. Off we go. The gates are down. They're ringing, so that's pretty nice. So we know that our caller works, right? Everything showed up the way we wanted to. The train is sitting on the tracks like we wanted to. And this is actually the big test. Make sure it kicks us out and it sells our, uh, sells our goods. Actually, you know what? Is it I'm trying to think here? Would it actually sell the goods if it's just kicking me out? Do I not need to, like, it's been a while. It's been a long while since I used a train. So, all right, let's just text test first to make sure it kicks me out like it should. All right, so that looked good, looking good. And right in this area, I believe I should get rejected, which I did. And yes, I do. In Brown Town. Yep, it even asked, do I want to sell it in Brown Town? Ah, uh, look at that. So it sold the wood. Um, and we got a harvest income. Great. So it looks like absolutely everything worked out just fine. First try. Right? Doesn't get any better than that, man. You know, love it when a plan comes together, huh? All right. So I think the other thing that I did is I want to check the hotspot. Did I not put a hotspot on one side of the map that, oh, did not show up? Just says rent train. Now this side should say, hmm, is it me that's missing something here? Should I not have a hotspot over there that says Goldcrest Valley on one side or Brown Town on one side? And a hotspot on the other that says Brown Town. Or uh, Ravenport, I think. I'm sorry. All right, well, this is Brown Town. Okay, so maybe it's just me. I'm not looking at it the right way. All right, so I am missing one. I'm missing that hotspot. So, okay, maybe that did not work. I uh, remember when I moved that over to the map.xml. So let's give that a shot. There should be a wood cell point here, though. Um, does that not show up as a wood cell point? Rent train. Get Brown Town, or... Brown Town, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so I was probably right. Well, maybe not, because that's for wood. All right, let's get back out of here. Anyhow, let's get out of here. Uh, now that we know that this works the way we wanted to, or at least part of it, we know what the issues are that we do need to fix. Uh, so let's get ourselves out of there. Okay. No, no, no. I want to quit. I want to quit. Get me out of there. All right, quit the desktop, yes. See, that's what I was trying to tell you guys before. I don't know if any of these guys have been following along. I've been I've been saying that my other my other version of the game at home has an option here, this quit to desktop. All right. See? Well, I know a couple of you guys had some theories of 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 what that could be, of why it you know, wasn't showing up and why I was able to quit the desktop. But like I've been saying, it is actually an icon. It's its own icon right there. Quit the desktop. And there we go. Out I go. Super duper easy. All right. So uh, let me see. Give me one second. And I will meet you back in the editor. Okay. All righty. Here we are back inside of the uh, Giants editor. 
And I was very pleased with that test. I think that went rather well. It, it kicked me out on the end just like I wanted it to, right? Uh, sold my goods, sold my lumber. Everything looked good. Gates were working. Train was okay. Uh, it did say Brown Town over here, which was pretty nice. I like I like the I like that little touch we added to it. Now the only thing was I really did think that uh, this hot spot would show up for me. Now in my defense, originally I was thinking it was a permanent hot spot that showed up that said Goldcrest Valley right beside it. Not sure what got me thinking that, but um, so I was wrong on that. And I did think that in my map.xml here, okay, now I, I changed this. I just recently changed this. This I, it only said hotspot up until now. And I think that's what the problem was, okay? Uh, so what I did is I changed this to placeable hotspot to match the other two. And I put teleport world position behind that with just empty, it's empty, just quote marks, okay? Uh, I really don't think that it needs this here, this teleport world position. I don't think it needs that. I just put it there for the sake of putting it there. Um, and I changed the placeable hotspot because maybe that's what it's looking for in here. I thought hotspot would work, but I guess not. Um, now, I do, I do think that this will work. However, you know, if I'm insistent on having Ravenport or whatever I want this to be on the other side, um, I kind of think the hotspot didn't work because one, it didn't have a room for text on hotspot and I kind of added that there, but for placeable hotspot, it does have a spot for text. So like I said, I, I think this will work. I think it'll be okay. But then again, I did say that last time. So <laughs> if it doesn't work, uh, I don't know, sue me, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, actually, if, if it doesn't work, what I would do personally is I would go back into my selling station train and is that where I'm at? Yep. And I would just add this uh, hotspot back below underneath here. So, and I'd have to deal with it. So I'd have Brown Town on both sides of the map and just is what it is, I guess. Right. Uh, let's see. So like I said, very pleased. Everything worked out really nicely. Uh, I have no complaints at all. Um, and that's what I expected. I, I knew darn well that it was going to work because that's how I roll. Damn it. I, I, <laughs> uh, honestly, no, I, I've actually, I'm one of the guys that, uh, I've conditioned myself to be one of those people that, you know, expect the best or, or no hope for the best, expect the worst kind of thing, you know? Uh, because man, I'll tell you what map making, especially in the beginning when these guys are learning is not without its problems, man. It is every time you try something different or things that have you, you've done a thousand times issues, still issues, always, always issues. All right, let's get moving on here though. So we got some more stuff to cover. Um, for the most part, we're just going to be moving things around, but I do want to show you a few things yet. So let's get to it. If one of us would stop talking, we can get more done. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these to your uh, little, oh, I don't know what you would call them, railroad crossings. We're going to move those into place. All right. So I'm going to grab these other crossings, the actual barriers that will go up and down. Okay, and we're going to move those into place and get those looking nice and neat. Okay, there we go, like so. Yeah, it looks pretty good, I guess. Um, do I want to turn them a little bit? Nope, looks good there. Alrighty, so I should have a second set in the middle here somewhere. That's the last set. There's our second set. All right, actually, let's move those. Just dragging them over for, oops, uh, look what I did. What did I do? All right, I just want to drag those over. All right, they look a little bit crooked there. So let me try, yeah, something like that. Open that up and we'll move that second one over just a tad like so okay so we're good on that just need to go back here and grab this guy all right and, and the thing that i want to show you is i'm going to need a third crossing here okay so i'm going to be adding something additional to the scene graph and this is where these guys are going to run into problems if you need to do this on your own maps because i know some of these guys are going to have a uh, you're going to have custom, 
you're going to have custom tracks, right? You're going to do a, a custom train system. All right. So this railroad piece is not critically important. It's more the, uh, the crossings. I know normally I just control B and move this where I want it, but I'm trying to keep myself from having to line this up when I get over there. I'm just hoping I can just drop this down into place like so and call it a day, which I just did. So there. <laughs> All right. All right. So the one thing that I wanted was this uh, railroad, this railroad crossing. OK, so I'm going to make a third one of those. All right. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to plunk that down over here. We're going to line it up really nice, right? Get it all lined up nice and neat, like so. Okay, I'm going to move this second crossing down here. Move it over. Okay, so we're good with that. Uh, now, the other thing that you guys could do, now you're probably going to have to go back into your map uh, where wherever we see, and you can't see them now, everything's a little invisible. You'd have to go up to your placeholders up here for train system, I guess. Is these call boxes here, okay? Boy, I got that one hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Um, these call boxes, normally, like I said, if you look in a base game, they have that, that big gray, oh, I don't know, I guess a call box, right? Electrical cabinet looking thing. Not sure what that is, like a, some kind of utility station. I'm not sure what that would be, uh, but you want to put those in there. So basically just decoration from this point. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now because it's just going to eat up some time in this video. And you guys should know how to do that by now, right? You should know how to decorate, uh, super easy. Uh, now, with some of these, I had a, I ran into this problem on Elm Creek, I believe it was, on the Elm Creek extension. And I had a problem with one of these here, right, with these uh, the collars, I think they would be. Is that a railroad collar? Yeah, it's a railroad collar. All right. And the problem was with the hot spot itself, not the trigger. It was the hot spot. It was kind of buried in the ground. And the reason was, is because I tried setting it on top of the train platform. All right. And the way that I ended up getting around that one is, let's get into the train system here quickly and I can show you. All right. On these hot spots here for where we rent the train. Actually, no, it's this one here for the trigger markers. Okay. The exclamation mark right here where it says adjust to ground true. If you need to, like, if you're going to set this on top of something like the train platform, like I did, uh, you need to adjust that to, or you need to mark, mark, oh man, I can't talk tonight. You need to change that to false, right? That adjust the ground, change it to false, and then you'll be able to move that marker up and down on your own and set it to the position that you want it. Okay. So that's something worth noting there. And like I said, with the uh, rest of this, when you do uh, your spline, your your node there for your spline if you guys end up doing your own your own your own tracks there uh the spline that you create you want to move into your train system see where the spline is right up here okay you want to move that into the train system make sure it's in this transform group uh now you don't necessarily have to have it in the same position in the zero position up here like this one is uh, but you do need to change the index path depending on where that ends up. Okay. So if it's maybe like down bottom or something, like, see, if I move this, I believe it should change the path. Did it not? Yeah. See, now it's four, four instead of four, zero. So now my, my train system wouldn't work because it wouldn't be able to find the spline. It's looking at position zero for it. Okay. So it needs to be up here at zero. Right. So same thing, if you have to create your own spline, you're going to need to change this node right here. So that reflects, and that's what that means, that node, it's looking for this index path, okay? That's what that's looking for. And like I had said during the test, that if your train was floating up in the air or he switched down into their tracks or anything like that, you can adjust this, uh, this Y offset and you can kind of fine tune them to get them into your to your tracks there, right? To get them to where you want them to. Um, everything seemed to work out really good with my driving range. It kicked me out where it should. However, I didn't test the other side of the map, but 
Uh, right now, I have no reason to believe that that would not have worked exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, let's see our railroad collar. So everything else looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, so the one thing I wanted to show you, uh, the, the additional thing I wanted to show you is we had just moved this crossing. So I made one more crossing. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that crossing and I am going to paste this in here. Okay. And we'll, uh, wow. Well, we we'll give it a name. I'm not sure. You give it any name that so you know what it is. I mean, I just like to identify things. Okay, so here's here's the deal. All right. So when we when we created this one, right, when I copied it and I moved it into the place, it won't just work on its own. Just creating another one and throwing it in there, it wouldn't work. As a matter of fact, when you try this in game, it'll look just like this. The lights will be on, the gate will be down, and that's it. Not working, not doing anything, okay? Uh, so what you need to do is, like I said, you get over there into your uh, into your traffic system.xml and you want to grab one of these railroad crossings and you want to duplicate it. Now, here's where I said every time you add something or you remove something, we're making some changes to the scene graph, uh, which we did here. OK, so in the scene graph uh, for our train system, we created an additional crossing. All right. So now I'm at a. Well, you want to look at everything to the right of this, this four and the greater than sign, or is that a left hand? Uh, I don't know. I'm tired. But anyhow, this four, seven. Now, I don't think four, seven is right. I think it's just seven. It might be zero, seven. No, it actually would not be because it'd be zero, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So it would be seven in the train system. So I think it's just zero, seven. Uh, let's go back there and have a look. I'll show you an easy way to figure this out. Yeah, it would be just 07 because I put it below the the 06. All right. All right. So if you guys are having problem with, problems with this now, I'll try and explain this quickly the way this works without getting too in-depth, okay? If you try and use the index path the way that it says here, where it says four greater than, you know, four, whatever that would be, a bar or seven, I guess. I'm not sure what you would call that thing. I called it a dash, but that wouldn't be right. <laughs> I really need to look some of these up and do some research before I get into this. Uh, but anyhow, that 4.7 there, uh, that would not be correct. So it wouldn't work for you. All right. You need to understand how how your scene graph works, the way that it's counting. OK, uh, now, if you if you look at this, right, if you look at right here, this train system, OK, that right there would be zero. Everything starts at zero. The way that your uh, your scene graph works, the way that it's counting items. Okay, so say we want to look at the train system there, okay? Uh, we don't necessarily count that because that's the parent transform group, right? So that stands by itself. Like we could literally open this train system by itself in the Giants editor, okay? So that would be the parent. So there, that doesn't really get counted, all right? You guess you can count that as zero. Technically, it would be zero. All right. Uh, but we start counting. When we count, we count from zero. All right. So this becomes zero. And then this would be basically zero, zero. Uh, see, right, this is four, zero. But ours, I guess, would be technically zero, zero. Or just zero in this case. If we open it up in a Giants Editor, it would just be zero. And then that would be one. Let's see how you see this is changing over here. And then two. And then three, but this here would be three zero. Now watch how this changes over here. You get that four three, it should be four three zero. See that? Four three zero, four three one, four three two, right? And then this would change us over to four four. Now, what I want to do just to show you, because I know this is going to get confusing for you guys. I know that it will. All right. And I'm that's not what I'm about. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, so for an easy way for you guys to figure this out, when you make your changes so you don't get your index path wrong, okay, just go into your mod map, all right, I'm going to go into my tutorial series, into my placeables, train system, and I'm going to open up this train system in the Giants editor all by itself, all right, did that not open, what happened there, there we go, okay, so now the way that this works like I said, if you look at this, this is basically zero. Like I said, that zero, meaning the parent transform group, 
And then you get that uh, greater than sign, okay? Now, when you open this up, again, you got zero, 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 one. And if you need to get in here, this will be zero, one, zero. See that? All right, so just by going through here, you can kind of figure out the way that it works. But if you, to, to make sure you have this index path absolutely correct and you're unsure of how this numbering system works, all right, just open it up on its own, all by itself, not in the map or anything like that. Just do what I did here. Open up the train system by itself in Giants Editor and you'll be able to figure out the index path, okay? Uh, now, normally it would follow the same scheme that we have going here. Like this is zero six, right? So this would become zero seven. Now, the, they, they count it this way because this is only the train system dot XML we're working on, right? So when you're in the map, when you're looking at the map, uh, you can see that, you know, we got the four, four. And what that is, is that's the fourth, the, uh, that's the, the fourth transform group under its parent. Okay, so here's the parent, which is placeholder. So here's zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, but since that's our parent for the train system itself, is it's is the parent because that's all we're really focusing on. We don't care about the rest of the map, so none of the other numbers mean anything to us because when it loads this up, it's only looking at the train system, not the rest of the map. All right, so this four should technically be a zero. So Right, so this should be zero and a greater than sign. Is it a greater than sign? That's confusing me. I believe that it is. Yep. Yep, I believe it's greater than. All right, so like I said, if you wanna do the train system in the map, you just kinda have to know how the numbering system works, okay? So making this new crossing down here, this middle, all right, so that's got us, that should be zero greater than, and then that four, seven. Uh, would that be four, seven? No, I don't even think so. Nope, should just be zero, seven. Yep, like we have here, zero, seven. All right, so like I said, normally if you created it in the scene graph right underneath uh, the first one, which we did, and that one was zero six. You should be able to just come through and change all these zero six to zero sevens and everything will be fine. Okay. You'll be, you know, no problems. And this goes for every single thing that you do. Okay. If you add an additional hotspot, you're going to have to come back and do this. If you add additional call boxes, you're going to have to come back and do this. Uh, no matter what you change, if you add or delete something, deleting will also change your scene graph, right? So you're going to have to come back and make sure that all these numbers are correct. All right. Now, what I normally do is at the end, when I'm all finished, when I know my train system, everything's in place. I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to take anything away. Uh, none of that. I will actually come back like we did here. If, if need be, now I know how to do my numbering system in the map, so I don't necessarily have to come in here and do this, but you guys would if you need to know, and you'll need to look all this up. Now I'm trying to see on the, nope, we're good. Sorry, I was looking for something specific. Um, so anyhow, to get your numbers, so here's that, mm, I didn't export this yet, so that, that middle is not going to show up, or the extra that I made wouldn't show up because I haven't exported it yet, which is a key thing. You need to remember that as well. All right. Is to, uh, when you get finished, when I made the changes to this train system, the way that I did, right. So I moved this over. Uh, I'm not sure there's my call box right there. Okay. I'm going to leave everything pretty much the way that it is. I, I believe that maybe this next call box, we could probably put next to the road. And at some point, maybe create an additional call box. I try to keep them at places where it's somewhat accessible. All right. So you're going to be in a tractor or some kind of vehicle when you pull up to these call boxes. So, you know, having them next to a road, it, it's not that you're trying to keep them next to the gates here. You're just trying to keep it accessible because you know you're going to be coming up to this thing on in a vehicle. All right. So here I have a road I can just pull off and call the train. Uh, now, I know Elm Creek Extension, I put some platforms and stuff in there that you can use to load the train. And, you know, I put call boxes next to those. So I've got a bunch of additional call boxes, a bunch of additional gates. And like I said, once I was done with all that, you know, just go up here to your train system. You know, typical of, of the way we always do it with any placeable uh, export selection, right? 
And then we will go into the placeables folder to find that train system, save it. You know, always make sure that you're at zero, zero, zero over in your attributes also. Okay. If not, it's going to, it's going to not going to show up where you want it to. Okay. So that's it. Like I said, you know, adding things, deleting things, it's going to change everything in your scene graph is going to change. So you need to come through and figure out that all of your uh, index paths are, are correct because everything inside of there in your train system, and this is only what your train system, you don't have to work, worry about the selling station or anything like that. It's only the train system. It keeps track of literally everything through these start or these nodes. Okay. And these index paths. So you have to make sure that all your traffic blockers, you know, they, they have the correct index path because you're going to end up putting, you know, additional, uh, additional items in here at some point. There's no doubt about it. You know, whether it's, you know, your callers or the blockers or, or what have you, you know, you're definitely going to end up modifying this in some way, shape or form. And that's guaranteed going to be the one thing that screws the most people up. You know, they put it in and it doesn't work. Okay. But that's because you got these paths wrong. All right. And you'll fight this thing 10 ways to Tuesday. And I've done it. When I first started out, I had no clue how this numbering system worked. And I was so lost and I was willy nilly changing numbers. Sometimes I was even guessing at them. I'm like, I, I had no clue. All right. But once I got things figured out, not a problem. All right. And like I said, if you need to really quickly, we, we you know, you can go over that again. Uh, now, I don't have that open anymore, but you just got to remember that your parent transform group, especially with the train system, Okay, because it's only it's only looking at looking at that by itself. When it loads it up, it's not loading up the entire map, right? It's only loading the train system when it tries to load that placeable. So it's only looking at one item. All right. So this parent transform group, right, it's treating that as as zero because because that's your parent, right? And then when you move on to the next one, you know, like down here where you, you have train spline, you know, that's zero one. And then zero two, and then you got, you know, you get the idea, you know, right on down the list, zero one. Oops, let me get back out of there. I just wanted to play with my arrows. <laughs> so it's zero. And since this is a child, that's zero one, zero two, zero three, zero four. Okay. But if you want to get in here after something, okay, so that's zero greater than sign, right? And then four. And then zero four, whatever that bar is there, zero bar one, <laughs> actually zero. I'm sorry. You start counting at zero, zero bar, zero, one, two. And you can kind of look over here and, and see what's going on, right? To get the idea. All right. And like I said, if you have any questions at all, if you're in doubt at all about the way that works, just open that up by itself, you know, in your, uh, and your giants editor and then whatever's in that index path is exactly what you need you know you don't need to count the the anything like from the uh well i guess you would technically you would because you're looking at this zero greater than seven right uh, but that's the way it will show up in the giants editor when you open the train system by itself okay so the only thing that i think that would be left to do here is to test this one more time just to make sure that this additional gate showed up, you know, correctly, which I know that it's going to. Uh, so I personally am not going to go through the whole testing phase. Uh, the only other things I really need to do here is decorate, maybe get some of these trees out of here so I can see my train coming, um, stuff like that. But I do want you guys to test it out. Like I said, be very careful of your index pass. Um, and that, I don't think, I don't believe I'm missing anything else. Let's quickly go through II3D just to make sure there's nothing else that I need to be telling you guys. Um, that, that really, that's it. Uh, like I said, we did the hot spots. We know what those are. Trigger markers. Yep. Uh, AI, we don't, there's nothing with the train system, so we don't need to worry about that. We know about the rent, changing the price. Uh, nodes we went over so you know how to find out where certain things are and that's i think that's part of the big thing too where you guys starting out like creating a spline you know you don't really know that you need to come in here and change this node this index path for your spline it needs to know where to find that spline like where did you put it you know it knows well it doesn't know but you're not you're not likely to put it back in the exact same place the old one was okay so it's going to have its its own index path you can put it in any order you want just make sure you have the right path 
All right, so we went over to spline Y offset for adjusting the height of your train uh, driving range. I believe we went over that. Uh, you can create additional selling points now. So if you guys are working on a custom uh, train system, uh, you can have an additional, uh, I'm not sure how you would work that, uh, but the selling station train that you see over here, you, you could have an additional one and you would have to mark that down here so it knows to sell those goods automatically when it when it hits this. And you would also need that starting node and ending node and all that stuff. But either way, just make sure that this selling station train that you don't rename this. You don't rename this to something else. If you rename this file, the selling station train, you do need to come in here and rename this one as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is for a future video, I'm going to work on some custom train, uh, some custom train systems, maybe with multiple cell points, uh, maybe having the train uh, come in and out of the uh, map at two different areas. And I'll show you guys how to set all that stuff up, right? It takes a little bit of work, a little bit of tinkering. I don't have all the answers right now, um, but with a little bit of experimentation, I will certainly have that figured out. Okay, so we went over the uh, vehicles here. So, you know, you can use any locomotive you want, any combination of uh, of wagons or the cars here. And you can, the, this is the exact order that they show up in as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you don't want this uh, grain wagon to be your very next wagon, right change it around you know change around the order because this is the order that they show up in uh if you're doing a logging map right and you only want like the timber wagon delete the rest of them and give yourself five timber wagons right that easy all right uh railroad callers you know what those do okay uh and if you have any uh any questions about like well what is this railroad caller i don't know what this railroad caller is right look at the address for it here look at the file path and when you have that opened up, right, you can just, you can open it up and look at just the file path and go, oh, okay, you can see what it is now. So that's what they're talking about. Just look at, you know, look for whatever highlighted. Um, I lost myself here. What happened? Oh, there I am. So I'm over there. Okay. So you have that highlighted and go, okay, that's what they're calling a railroad caller. Okay. I got that. And then that's the trigger. Well, the hotspot will be what shows up there. And there's a teleport node if you need to teleport into there. All right, so you get the idea, okay? And then, of course, we went through the crossings because we just added one additional one, making sure that we uh, we changed all of our index paths on our node. And we got that all okay. Uh, this here, the starting rotation and ending rotation, right? Those are your, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, I've been, I'm drawing a blank your keyframes <laughs> all right so that kind of works the animation so and that's for the gate itself so if you're looking at at this gate all right let's get ourselves here okay on this gate and i'll go through this really quickly i mean i don't believe these guys are going to be changing this ever uh but it's possible you know maybe you're doing something custom where you need this to go a little bit different all right so this barrier here uh, the rotation you can see right now is at uh, 90, 0, 0. Wait, is that right? Let me go. Let me check this quick. I want to make sure that's right because I thought it started at 0, 0, 0. But it's at 90, 0, 0. Okay, let's look in here. Uh, oh, yeah, because it starts at 0, 0, 0. All right, I'm sorry. So when it starts, it's in the up position, Okay. So the animation is like this is its natural position. All right. And that's where it starts. And it works off a time value. OK, so it'll time it on its way down and it will actually rotate until its end position, which is 90. OK, like you see there. So if you guys need to change that at all, what you would do is say you only want it to come this high or you need it to go higher like back there. Don't know why you would ever, ever need to do that, but People are strange, so <laughs> all right, how about that? Looks a little more normal. All right. So what you would do is you would just record your new stop, your new your new value for uh this would be your starting position, right? And then say you wanted to go a little bit further down, and that would be your new end position. But you get the idea. So if you ever need feel like you need to change the uh the values right the animation for your gates 
that's the way you would do it, right? And that's that's what those values are. So even if you're wondering, like, what is this value? That's what that is, right? That's this here is the animation for your gate itself. Okay, your up position, down position, and the duration is how long that takes to happen. It's timed. So in four seconds, okay, it takes four seconds for it to make this animation. Okay, that's what that is. Uh, traffic blockers, uh, if you look at the crossing itself, um, where is it? Traffic blocking position. It's kind of like an invisible square that you would see there. Uh, it's invisible, but it's kind of like an invisible square. And it's, it's a literal, um, like if you look into, well, maybe not they literally run into it, right? So that's what stops the traffic. Like if you see somewhere in your prefabs, if you look inside here in this prefabs here, uh, somebody came out with a stop sign set. Uh, if you knew this or not, traffic lights, I mean, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't, right here, traffic lights. So there's an AI traffic light script and this will have your AI stop at a traffic light. Pretty cool. I did play around with it a little bit. I uh, didn't care for it entirely myself. I mean, it's an awesome idea. I think it, it could, it's worth expanding upon and maybe doing a bit differently. But the way that they did this is they used the traffic blocker, right? Uh, almost, I don't know if it was exclusively from the trains, but they that's what they did is they used a traffic blocker, but it's a physical block, right? So if you if you wanted to run the red light, forget it. Not going to happen <laughs> because it's in the block position. That block is actually active and you'll slam right into it like an invisible wall. Um, so that's what I didn't really like about it. Uh, you know, I would have preferred that, you know, it stopped the AI traffic like it should, but you still had the option. Uh, I don't know. Good idea, though. It's definitely a good idea. And I think they're off to an outstanding start with that. So I just like to see their maybe be a, a different approach to it is all all right so that's what that does that that's everything in a nutshell that is the train system so hopefully i did not forget every anything and uh, we went over thing everything well enough that these guys have got a good handle on this now that you can you can take on your own train system and and you know from start to finish without any issues oh and the last thing too is uh any of these blockers that you have set up here, these railroad crossings, uh, you do need to have a traffic spline going through there, okay? Uh, if you have one set up and there's no there's no spline for the traffic system, it's going to throw an error in your error log that says it can't find uh, a spline for the traffic system, all right? As a matter of fact, if I was to look at my error log right now, which I don't have open up there, um, just from that test, I can almost guarantee that I not even almost guarantee, I guarantee it's in there that, that, uh, that error is definitely in there. Okay. And I'll show you what it looks like real quick here. Uh, a little bit further. This is where it's loading everything, loading, loading, it's lighting, loading. Alrighty. Warning, unable to find traffic spline for traffic blocker. Okay. So this here is exactly what it'll look like. This is that's because I have all these blockers set up and there is no traffic spline running through there. OK, it expects to see a traffic spline. Uh, what do we got here? Placeable selling station wood train. Invalid vector three for placeables, placeable seven position. Well, that's a good one. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Train system selling station wood train. My US tours are placeables that XML invalid vector three. Um, and this is in my placeables that XML. So it does have something to do with my selling station wood. I'm pretty sure. Let's get in there really quick. Let me get rid of this. All right, selling station wood one and two. All right, so what it's not, it's not liking one of these coordinates here. All right, so I would just need to redo one of these. Probably this one here. That, that doesn't look so hot, does it? What is going on with that? Must be the way that it cut and paste. What do I have going on there? Oh, yeah, what do I have going on there? Let me undo that. 
what in the world? No wonder it threw an error. <laughs> you know what? That could be very well. That's that's probably why that thing didn't show up. Exactly why. Remember when I said my hotspot that I had set over there, it didn't show up. That's probably exactly why. At least the icon itself didn't show up. Look at this. Who, who ever seen something like this? That is absolutely ridiculous. My God. That's a rookie mistake right there. Actually, not, not even that. I can't even say that because that's a first for me. I have never ended up with it. It looks like a double coordinate, right? Because that's one number. That's 535. That should be this number here. And it should be 535.8. But this negative, man, I don't even know what the hell it is. This 80.5 is the height. 535. So I would imagine whatever this is can go. Whoa. 535.8 is right. And this last part can go. All right. So that. Yep. That's a normal coordinate there. So there you go. We just learned something new. Oh, and I closed the log. Damn it, power. So when you guys see an error like that, that's what that is. That vector that. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> hey, like I said, you know, hope for the best, expect the worst. That's kind of what happens sometimes. All right. But other than that, everything did work out. OK, so like I said, I'm not I'm not going to test it again. Uh, maybe one day we'll go through uh, troubleshooting just a bunch of different things. I'm not sure I could either make something have a problem on purpose or we could just do a whole mess of stuff without testing it and see what kind of errors we come up with. But like I said, the whole point of that before I got off on that tangent was that you do need to have a traffic spline. If you're using these blockers here, it will throw an error if you did not have that. OK, and like I said, I'm willing to bet that this hotspot one that the hotspot itself now works because the coordinate is fixed. So it will show the hotspot for at least the cell point for the for the wood. Actually, I don't even know if that has a hotspot for that. So the selling station for the wood will still work now. And then hopefully the hotspot does show up because I fixed that in a map.xml or altered it into a way that I think it would work. And that's it. So like I said, hopefully you guys, you know, found that helpful and I didn't confuse you again too much because there can be a lot to this and I, and I can definitely understand how it could be confusing. Right. So I did the best I could do with, I did the best that I could do with that. And, uh, hopefully that's good enough. So once again, like, like I said, if you guys have any questions at all, you know, hit me up in the comments and we'll try to work through it. You know, I generally have an answer for most things. And if I don't, you know, I, I will definitely look it up or do some testing or whatever I need to do to get you the answer. All right. And then we can both learn something. All right. So like I said, hit me up with any questions that you guys have. If I need to, I'll shoot a whole nother video. All right. Just just to clarify things a little bit. So it's, it's really not a problem. Uh, and like I said, we're still trying to grow this channel. So, you know, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already that it just it's it's can only help me out. Like I said, these videos take a lot of time, a lot of editing, a lot of explaining and a lot of late nights and <laughs> you get the idea and I'm certainly not going to get rich anytime soon or ever for that matter but you know well, you never know actually my my big thing what I'd like to see and it's not really a money thing I mean of course that would be pretty nice if one day we ever got to that point but uh, actually what I like to do is just grow a bigger audience and get more people into map making all right that, that's kind of my ultimate goal because I have a lot of fun with it. And I just realized I know what my frustrations were starting out, right? And not having answers to things and not being able to come up with those answers, right? There was no good videos. You know, I had to watch 10 different videos and I still didn't get a full explanation on how something worked, right? So most of this is self-taught. It just is what it is. All right. So like I said, if you haven't done so already, you know, like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. And it would help me out immensely. Okay. Um, and that's it. So with that being said, I am Bauer Brown and I will see you on the next one.